All right, good morning. I'm Larry Short, and this is Mushroom Obsession. And uh, I'm really excited today because um, I've been working on this culture, this bed of uh, rotting maple leaves here in my backyard. This looks like the woods, doesn't it? But this is actually part of my backyard here in the northwest at Shorts and Woods. And uh, every fall, for the last four or five years, in this pile of maple leaves, I I, after the leaves fall, I dump the maple leaves here, and then they, they push down. And there's a culture of shaggy parasol mushrooms growing in these maple leaves. And every fall, all of a sudden, they pop up, and I've got a wonderful crop of shaggy parasol mushrooms. Each year for the past four or five years, the crop has basically doubled in size from the year before. So I'm really excited to see what's going to happen this year. Typically, it comes in about late September, early October. Right now, it's September 17th. We had a good soaking rain last night came out here this morning and uh, what I found was shaggy parasols popping up. Some good size, uh, adolescent size basically, not fully mature. So the shaggy parasol mushroom is chlorophyllum uh, bruneum or chlorophyllum ricotes or chlorophyllum olivieri. They're all very similar species. And there is a look-like species which is not edible called uh, chlorophyllum molybatitis. You want to avoid that. I'll, we'll talk more about how to do that, but in this pile every year I've, I've grown actual shaggy parasols. I know they're shaggy parasols, and so uh, I've been harvesting them each year. And so we're gonna we're gonna start on that process today. There's not a whole lot of them out here yet. And you can see shaggy parasols start out very egg-like in shape, kind of round, and the cap catches from the veil and it leaves the veil on the stalk. This is a a stalk of one I picked two already. And uh, well, the veil just fell off the stalk. The veil uh, cover, covers the stalk or the stipe of the mushroom where it's detached from the cap. They're very soft, feather like, um, uh, like their name. They're parasol shaped, although they, they flatten out as they get older. These mushrooms also don't last very long, so I pick them as soon as they're in adolescent stage. The adolescent stage are about three or four inches in diameter, as you can see here. As they flatten out, they'll, they'll grow out to about six or seven inches in diameter. They're larger, but they also have a tendency to degrade and get wormy really quickly. So these two here are about perfect. The others that you can see here, there's one little one right here, which you can't probably can't see in the video very well. There's a couple more here, a couple here. There's a couple more behind that fern. And then there's a number of other mushrooms which are coming up around the edge, which I'm also going to pick and toss. They're not edibles, and I don't want them taking over long shaggy parasol piles so but we're going to harvest these two shaggy parasols right in front of me right now and I'll show you how to do that so the edible, edible part of the shaggy parasol is the cap only the stipe the stem is fibrous not really edible so I just leave uh, like I did this one actually this one you can see the, the ring on it right there where it was detached from the cap but I just leave the, the stem right in the ground and that way I, I, I don't want to disturb the uh, the growth of the organism itself, my ceiling, which is pretty much underground. I'll show you that in a moment. But the best way to harvest these is to grab that stalk, and to grab the head gently, twist, around in a circle, like this. Kind of invert it like that, and you'll see it comes right off the head. Um, so you see we have a nice, firm, beautiful cream white in the inside. I talked about the look like chlorophyllum molybidatus, which is toxic and is responsible for most of the mushroom poisonings in the U.S. each year, because people are trying to get these, and the, the C. molybidatus looks just like these. We're very similar. But the spores are greenish in color, and you can't always tell. That unless they're mature, the gills will look greenish as well on the molybidites, but on these, you'll want to do a spore print. We'll talk about that. We'll do a spore print on these, and uh, I've already identified these, this organism. It's uh, Rakotis. Spore prints come out cream white, very, very pretty. So this is a good, safe uh, mushroom. Another characteristic of the shaggy parasol is when it's injured, as in when we tore the, uh, the cap off the stipe, you'll see it develops kind of a maroon reddish bruise at the in injury, in particular on the cap. You don't see, I mean on the stipe, you don't see it so much in the caps, but on the stipe, you'll see them turn kind of a reddish color right there. So uh, I'm gonna grab a couple more here, including this one. So, right off the stipe, so I've got two good-sized 
for Cody's right here. And I'm gonna walk over and grab those two behind that front as well. I meant to bring my basket back here, but I didn't do that, but I So I've got three here, and uh, I will have within a week probably dozens, possibly hundreds more in this entire this patch of maple leaves extends down about 20 feet that direction. Actually, so you can see something going on down there right now, so I'll check it out when I'm done here. I'm also going to mention these nice pretty little mushrooms, these brown ones. When you pull them up, you pull them up with maple leaves, and you can see underneath, uh, you might see them growing. Um, brown gills, I don't know what these are, I can figure it out, but I know I don't want them, so I'm going to toss them out this direction, get rid of them all. A bunch of them coming up, I'll try and keep my patch before they drop all their spores. I'm going to generate next year's mushrooms, I'm going to try and keep my patch as clean as possible for the, for the shaggies here. Filling up a little bit of the mycelium with these because I don't mind disrupting that. There are a bunch of them coming up. Whatever they are. They like the maple leaves as well. This is the leaves in this batch are big leaf maple. I have a beautiful big leaf maple tree right behind you. Drops its leaves every year on my lawn. And uh, that's where these have been coming from. I will also check the forest around about but primarily they're growing in this patch every year, right now. So, uh, for mushroomobsession.com, this is Larry Short. I've got some beautiful shaggies right here in my hand. And we're going to come back and tell you how to uh, prepare them and how to store them long term. Okay? Happy shrooming.